What is your first apartment tip? If you see one mouse, take it very seriously. There are bound to be more and there have likely been issues in the past as in rat crap on every surface. When doing the walkthrough with the landlord, make sure you both look behind large appliances, that is stove, fridge, etc. Landlords often deduct cleaning fees from your return deposit for not cleaning these areas, but don't ever actually take care of it before the next tenant moves in. Take note of the carpet's condition during the walkthrough. Ask about hanging pictures in the walls and proper move out procedures. Some landlords expect you to putty any holes. You can also ask for a paint sample to fix any minor blemishes you may have left. Before signing the lease, make sure you clarify how much of the deposit is refundable and where the non-refundable portion goes to. My last house had a non-refundable carpet cleaning fee, but they still deducted even more from my refund when my lease ended because I didn't get my carpets cleaned before moving out. Luckily I held onto the paper I requested from the landlord on day one with the deposit fees breakdown on it. I ended up getting my entire deposit back. Which brings me to my final bit of advice. Document everything take pictures. Keep rent receipts. Save emails containing inquiries. Everything. Fill out the check in check out sheet extremely thoroughly. If you don't list something that damaged when you move in, it's not uncommon for them to keep your security deposit and even charge you extra when you move out. Unless you have proof, they have the legal upper hand to charge you so that they can make repairs for things that weren't your fault. Also on this, it may not be completely moral but, our apartment didn't collect the current damage sheet thing until 3 days after we moved it. We scratched the vinyl floor moving the couch in, we definitely listed that as existing damage. If you have roommates all on a lease, make sure you remove your name from the lease if you leave before they do, even if it's expensive to break it. I learned the hard way and got sued for $5,000 in damages that weren't my fault. Introduce yourself to the neighbors you share a wall floor ceiling with. If anyone is annoyed by loud music or pot smoke or whatever, it makes them more likely to come directly to you instead of the landlord. And actually tell them to let you know if you're being too loud so you can fix the problem quickly. Document freaking everything. They can and will shaft you on the way out. I moved in with a broken blind blade on one window, and didn't document it. They charged me $50 for a new set of blinds, pocketed the money and left it for the next guy. Take your time looking at a place. Don't feel rushed. If the person showing you the place rushes you, ask to reschedule. Check windows in case they stick. Try each tap for good water pressure. Flush the toilet. Check for lit pilots on furnaces, open cabinets to check for water damage. Identify basic safety issues like quality of exterior doors lack of hand railings on stairs. Document anything and everything. Budget for renters insurance and accurately inventory your belongings. Don't get an over your head on your budget. If a roommate bails, will you be okay? And do prioritize your quality of life. Educate yourself on any potential legal issues your rights your landlord's rights. Also, many states afford rights to people, guests, who stay a certain time. Be careful who you let crash or you may have a really tough time evicting them when you need your space back. Also, when you are on the walkthrough, ask how many other people have a key to the apartment. You don't need any surprise guests. Google address for bedbugs. Ask how pest problems are dealt with and if there are any current ones. Ask about the culture of the building and why the last person moved out. Talk to previous renters if possible. Talk to the PPL that live there. Ask them everything you want. You're gonna freak up in one way or another. Take as many notes as you can of all the mistakes that you'll definitely make so you can learn from them when second apartment time comes along. Don't trust your roommate with the rent check. If you have to yourself, you make sure to get all the money for the rent, unless you're the butthole spending the rent check on something else. Keep a fire extinguish near the door. If you put it near the stove, if the stove is on fire you might not be able to get to it. If it's by the door, you can grab it while evacuating, and then make the decision on whether or not to go back in once you're safely outside, rather than having to decide which way to run. Out or to the fire extinguisher? In the middle of an emergency, you can buy universal fire extinguisher for $15 at any store like Walmart. Also, make sure your smoke detectors work. 
your landlord should be responsible for making sure you have them. But it's on you to change batteries, etc. And they're not expensive. If your landlord is doddling, just buy your own and include the receipt as part of your rent or something. Paying an extra $20 is better than being dead. My building has the fire alarms wired into emergency power, and test them on the first Tuesday of every month. I hate it because, it happens at 1pm, I work that night, I work graveyard shift, I need to sleep till 3pm to be functional, the alarm test goes on for a half hour, making it impossible to sleep again. Try not to spend any unnecessary money during the first month or two, then you'll hopefully have some laid back for when you might need it and you'll be sure to know how much you can and have to spend. Good luck. This is my biggest fear. I get paid monthly and have to move 2 months before my first paycheck. I don't have enough money to last me that long. The day you move in have a box bag with toilet paper, a hand towel, some soap, some plastic cups, and paper towels in it. That box bag should be the first thing you put in the apartment and should be unpacked immediately. During the move you'll eventually need to use the bathroom or drink water. Now you can. A survival kit is paramount to any new living space. Add a 4PK of 60W light bulbs, a cheap Walmart floor lamp, a plunger and one of those yellow sponges with a green abrasive pad on one side. A shower curtain if there's not already one. Definitely Lysol, Drano, Pledge, and Windex. Any damage that happens while you're there and is not your fault document IT our neighbors above us had a flood, and it soaked out walls and carpet. We called and no one came to fix it. When we moved out they tried to charge us for water damage. Luckily I had photos and videos of the damage and we were able to get out of it. Our neighbors above us had a floor. I should hope so. Always have at least a month's rent in savings, ideally more. Most of us are only one or two setbacks away from not being able to afford rent. At least have the security of being able to afford rent even if you lost your job tomorrow. I would like to add to this by saying if you lose your job, you should tell the owner ASAP and make sure you know your local laws. Where I live, non-payment of rent means they only to give you 3 days to move or correct the non-payment. Basically be open and honest. But prepare to vacate quickly as at that point you are hoping a payment plan can be arranged. That's a long shot. This goes for any move not just apartments. The first thing that should be moved in is a roll of toilet paper into every bathroom. Read everything and ask questions before you sign anything. Also, take pictures, video and write down every possible thing floor in that apartment. Also, I would ask if there are any additional fees associated with the apartment. For example, I moved into a 2 bed slash 2 bath apartment in PHX on a $1100 mo special. They did not tell me there were trash disposal fees, pest control fees, water, etc. On top of the $1100 mo rent, I caught it in the small print I read before signing. Those little additions added up to almost another $150 mo. I wish we had 1102 BR apartments here. The ones in my area cost at least 1300 in shady neighborhoods. A good landlord will let you take the cost of minor repairs and improvements off the rent if you ask in advance. Do the work yourself, and provide receipts. Lease signing is an ideal time to negotiate. When I got my first apartment a window had no curtain. Found out later that was because the previous tenant had trashed the place. The owner had meant to replace it but hadn't gotten around to it. So I showed her an example of what I had in mind. Gave her a cost estimate. And she gave the okay. That window needed a curtain one way or another. Got something nicer this way than what I would have sprung for on my own. Don't rent the apartment that's underneath the room with the communal washer dryer. If there's a problem with the machine overflowing or water pipe drain hose, it's gonna be mostly your problem. Read your lease agreement. It's becoming extremely common that even death will not release a tenant from the contract or they don't offer lease breaks altogether. Always ask how you can get out of your lease if something comes up. Also know that even if you're not occupying the space, you are still required to pay the rental installments until you fulfill your lease agreement. Ask if prorating is an option. If you're moving in the middle or later in the month, ask if proration is an option that way you don't have to pay the full month. 
Any communication you have between the landlord or the accounts manager about your lease agreement or account statements, have everything in writing. This protects your rights as a tenant just in case they're playing games with your account or lease agreement. My last apartment had a clause that you could pay a fee to break a lease early. It came in really handy when I bought my house because it was less than the remaining 2 months rent I would have owed. Call maintenance for every single thing. They might get annoyed but think about this. If you mess something up and put in a request, you have a 50 stroke 50 chance of them fixing it for free. If you leave and they do their inspection and it's messed up then you will almost always get it snatched from your security deposit. Note, use the Craigslist help job offered section. Let's say you frick something up and it's totally your fault and you know 100% they will make you pay for it. There is almost always someone on Craigslist willing to repair it for about 50% of the cost of a contract of the apartment people hire. The economy isn't amazing. There are tons of people on Craigslist who aren't looking for cheap jobs because they don't know what they are doing. They're looking for cheap jobs because their field might be hard to find work in or they hit a rough spot. Or maybe they just do side jobs because they either one make more direct money than if they did it for their company or two are saving up to take their family to Disney or something. You can ask them to send proof of their work to kinda gauge how good they are and take quotes from each person and make an educated decision. The biggest examples if you're young or have pets would be drywall repair and carpet repair. If you frick those up the apartment owner will take a big chunk of your deposit. There are thousands of people who can do a good job to the point that your folks will never even know you messed things up. And good luck and congrats. If you can visit the building at night on the weekend and see what the noise situation is inside and outside of the building. Also figure out the commute to work uni and do the commute one morning before you move in. Check the bathroom and kitchen especially fridge. Make sure ventilation is halfway decent and there is no mold. Make sure to wipe away dust from ventilation points every once in a while. Especially for a bathroom with a ceiling fan and no windows. Look under cabinets, around windows, near the water heater, etc for mold. My landlord moved us into a different apartment that had been newly remodeled so they could remodel the old one as well and tried to pass off the mold under the kitchen sink as paint. Noop. Mold can kill you. Don't mess around with it. Always read reviews of the complex before you apply. If the reviewers constantly talk about how bad the management is. Try to avoid that property. Always start searching at least 3 months before you absolutely need to be there. Some larger property management companies will suggest a 9-ish month lease because they know nobody wants to move after only 9 months so they will jack up your rent upon renewal. Pet rent is becoming more common, which I find absurd. Make sure you know the true costs of deposits and rent charges. As others have stated, take thorough pictures and email them to yourself upon move in. Do the same upon move out and do a walkthrough with the property manager each time. Do not rely on building Wi-Fi. Plan on paying for your own, secure, internet service even if internet is advertised as a perk. Check the shower water pressure, including flushing the toilet while the shower is running. To be fair, a 9 month lease is perfect for students, everyone I know was trying to sublet their crap come May, because nobody wants to stay near school if they can help it so they were all stuck paying the whole summer. Make sure to get all the little essentials, trash cans, broom and dustpan, shower curtain, etc. These are things I didn't think about until I had already moved in. Get familiar with the tenant's rights in your state. Also keep a log of all maintenance requests or calls to the landlord. Nothing formal, just documentation to back you up if an issue arises. This. I had an apartment try to hold me accountable for damaged carpet. That my dog did. In fact. Damage. But they were required by law to replace it the same time I moved out. Called it to their attention when they tried to find me and ended up getting my full deposit back. Keep your place clean or small, but clean place is way better than a really nice apartment that looks like a pigsty. It doesn't take a lot of effort vacuum every couple of weeks. Take out the trash, do the dishes, and put stuff where it belongs, and you'll be in great shape. This. It is easier to keep an apartment clean than to clean once it is in a bad state. I have a Saturday schedule with a major cleaning task on each Saturday that I would otherwise put off. And I make sure the kitchen and bathroom are clean and tidy every evening. 
the walkthrough checklist they give you before you sign the lease document everything and take photos. No matter how unimportant something seems, document it. Ask what year. S. Things were replaced and redone locks, carpet flooring, paint, plumbing, roof, appliances, windows, etc. And get everything in writing. Every single time you speak with your landlord, make sure to save all emails, record phone calls, etc. Make a mental note of the cars in the lot, and for safety make sure to know where all the entrances exits, cameras, and security posts are. Just be super observant. If you are a quiet person, tell your potential landlord so, they want to know this, as putting the party types and quiet people close to each other is a recipe for disaster, yet they can't, or simply avoid, asking you this basic question. They me, super quiet, with old people, bad move, old people are secretly loud, because if you work a late shift like I do, you're gonna hear them outside at the crack of freaking dawn, being as loud as they feel like. In my situation, I'd honestly rather have the younger people. The two things I learned after my first apartment. Make sure there's good storage space. Minimum of one decent closet in each bedroom plus one in the hall for coats or bathroom storage. And don't forget kitchen storage. Are they grounded? Three prong. Outlets located where you need them like where the TV and computer might go. Or the coffee pot. Toaster. Microwave. Roommates suck. LOL and living with friends can ruin the friendship. I had one friend bounce her rent check. Not a happy time. Check your cell service in the apartment during a walkthrough first. This should maybe be higher. Nothing worse than discovering you have poor reception where you live. Pay your rent. Pay. Your. Freaking. Rent. Seems simple, yeah? I don't mean pay your rent on payday. I don't mean pay it when you got it. Pay it when it's due. You know what sucks worse than having less money because you paid rent? Getting kicked out of your house because you're not paying rent. You know who's looking for a place to rent? Everyone. You know who gets the places to rent? The ones that have a proven history of paying their freaking rent on time. You can live on beans, potatoes and onions. You can live without sinking booze on the weekend. You can live without the latest awesome game console. You can live without all the fancy toys. Do you have to give all that stuff up? No, you don't. You just have to buy them after you paid your freaking rent. A good rental history can only be bought one way and it's by being a good renter. Being a crap renter will follow you when you're looking for references. Do you want your current landlord to be saying, great tenant, paid rent on time without fail? Or would you prefer, had to chase that bastard every month for rent? Which one would you rent to? Pay your freaking rent. Never frick with the rent. Frick with whatever else you like. Not your rent. Clean the dishes. It teaches basic home maintenance and is just annoying enough to be a pain in the butt when they stack up. Your parents spent their adult lives collecting the items you grew up with. Don't expect to move into your apartment with a couch, end tables, decorations, a waffle maker, an espresso machine, candles, an elder tree dining room table with onyx inlays, TV, curtains, drapes, rugs and runners. It takes time to accumulate. When looking at apartments, look for outlets. Are there enough where you need want them? Think about bedside for phone charging, bathroom for any hair products, dryer curling iron or things like radio etc. Kitchen for toaster blender coffee pot etc. Where do you want your TV? How far away are the outlets and the cable connection? Outlets, man, important. And if you can't get an apartment with outlets exactly where you want them, consider extension cord technology. Put a double layer of tin foil at the bottom of the oven to catch falling stuff. When it comes time to clean your oven, rip that out and get more put in. Flush the toilet. Open and close the windows. Lock and unlock the door. Check the fridge and freezer. Basically check everything to see if it works before they give you the lease to sign. You don't want to sign and then find out only one window opens. Before you bring a single box into the apartment, Take pictures of everything. Take pictures of the doors, the locks, the walls, the floors, the appliances, the sinks, 
the bathroom, the lights, the windows, and anything else you can find. Definitely take pictures of anything that is out of the ordinary even if it's a mildly damaged part of the apartment like a scratch in the wall. Upload those pictures to your computer and put them in a well labeled folder. Some landlords are sleazy and try to pin past damages on you so they can keep your deposit. If you don't keep good documentation of everything that was out of place when you moved in, you may get blamed for it without recourse. Also, make an extra house key and keep it at work or with a friend. Getting locked out sucks and if your landlord gets involved it will not be cheap. Buy a plunger and toilet bowl brush. If you are young or in college and plan on having parties at your apartment, get a lock for your bedroom. Make sure there is a lock between your house guests and your electronics. Clean up your dang messes as soon as you make them. If you leave the room for longer than a minute and there's a mess left behind, your crappy roommate, do the dishes. Pick up your crap. Don't borrow anything without asking first. You aren't living in your parents house anymore. Do not get romantically involved with anyone that you live with. If you're moving in with your so because the relationship is strong enough to handle it, that's one thing. But if you start to fancy one of your roommates for some reason, that's bad news. If they aren't into you, it'll make things awkward. If they are into you and the relationship goes bad, you're basically trapped in a house with an ex. You'll be forced to move one way or another. Make a budget over the next year and make sure that you are smart with your savings. If the rent goes up, or you need to move for any reason, you need to think about all of the costs associated with moving. Remember that you likely won't receive your deposit from the first apartment until long after you've had to put down money to secure your second apartment. When choosing an apartment, do a run through of your typical day. Imagine yourself getting ready, is the bathroom mirror at an okay angle, and walking out the door. Will you be looking directly into the sun when you try to leave the driveway? Is there a blind spot on the road that will make you pray every time you pull out? Cue sexual innuendos lol. Obviously, not every apartment will be perfect for you, but put safety first. Also, make sure that there is internet connection available. We made that mistake when moving into our current house. Never again. If you're going to have roommates, please for the love of whatever gods there are to create a chore roster, rules, whatever else you need to and do it now before you move in. There are so many horror stories about it, but we're friends it's fine no it's not it never works out ever. Buy second hand furniture, save up for the good stuff later, good luck. Good friends and good roommates are not always the same thing. Don't expect your security deposit back. Seriously, no matter what you do, you're not getting all of it back. That's not to say don't try to clean the apartment, just don't expect them not to find issues. Or, another way of looking at it, be prepared to fight over the security deposit. Have your landlord's home address handy. Make a point of verifying that info, so you can serve them notice to take them to small claims court over it. A lot of university towns have stipulations as to what constitutes normal wear and tear. E.g. A fresh coat of paint versus actual holes in the wall. Comma take pictures and videos of everything on your first day, especially if you have roommates. Comma report damages ASAP such as the stove breaking. Comma get downstairs if you can get an elderly upstairs neighbor. Get upstairs if you have young downstairs neighbor. Meaning don't let college kids live above you. Comma get a unit with a washer and dryer if possible. Landromats are actually pretty expensive. With that being said, don't be afraid to wash your own clothes in the sink. Comma clean up after yourself and don't let your sink grow an ecosystem. Comma don't use the spare room closet as a trash room. Comma plan your meals. Stop going out to eat so much. Comma pay rent ahead of time. Like a month or two in advance. It makes budgeting so much easier because you know that no matter what, you have a roof over your head. Always get confirmation of advance rent paid. Comma don't be afraid to call the police on that loud butt group of neighbors. Comma make friends with someone in the leasing office. You'll often have to fight less to get your deposit back. Comma clean everything when you move in, especially the kitchen and bathroom. Disregard anything you've been told about it being cleaned prior to your move in. Comma always assume things are going to cost more than you think they are. AKA, highball everything when budgeting. If you think your light bill will be about $100 a month, budget for $130. 
you'll have a little extra every month since you paid less than what you budgeted for. This can be saved and put towards next month's light bill and can cause you to be more frugal web you think you have less than you do. Comma don't be afraid to ask for extensions on a bill if you only have $3.59 in the bank. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.